a sigh. <sighs> and we'll do that again. Maybe shrug your shoulders. <sighs> and one more time. <sighs> and start to arrive in your body. Start to become aware of your lower body as it settles into the space that you're sitting on. Start to become aware of your hips and your sacrum. And try to bring awareness to the spine. So just feeling the tip, the tip of your tailbone and imagining all of the vertebrae all the way up to the base of your neck, right at the atlas, which is at the top of the spine and the base of the skull. And as you breathe, notice that your spine actually moves in response to the breath. As you breathe in, there's a lengthening and elongation of the spine. As you breathe out, a softening of the muscles. As you breathe in, you might feel a gentle rocking forward or backward of the spine. So the spine is literally floating on the breath. Feel the top of your head also floating on top of your spine. So as you breathe, feel the effortless holding of the head by your spine and the muscles of your neck. Begin to feel the sensation of air as you inhale through your nose and as you exhale through your nose feel the coolness of the air as it enters the nostrils and notice that the air is slightly warmer as you exhale through the nostrils as you bring as much awareness as you can to your body and to your breath. It's as if we are looking at a lake with little surface waves from the wind. And the more calm and still you get and the more intentional you get about noticing and breathing softly, the less ripples are on top of the lake, the more calm it starts to become, the more peaceful. It's like the eye of a, is it a cyclone or a hurricane? You know, that, that eye of the, the storm, tornado. I obviously don't live uh, where those happen, just earthquakes. You're feeling yourself at the center of that storm, just this peaceful place that is untouched by the winds and weather around you. Hineni, here I am. At different points in biblical history, God calls out to Moses, to Abraham, to Samuel, where are you? And they reply, Hineni, here I am. They were not only stating where they were geographically, but spiritually. 
Each time after answering, here I am, they were asked to give themselves over to something that seemed impossible. It would require so much more than they believed they had within themselves. They were asked to do hard things. Saying Hineni is no small statement. When we say, here I am, we declare our willingness to stand in the fire, to be transformed by the alchemy that awaits our soul. So feeling Hineni, hallelujah, here I am. No matter what's going on in life right now, no matter what circumstances you're facing, the fact that you are here, right here, right now, is a testament that you can stand in that fire, that you can stand in the fire and be transformed. So let's move through our physical practice today, mindful of our breath, mindful that each breath is a gift. Grateful that our feet are planted on the floor, that our bodies can move in various ways, even if sometimes with pain. Let us practice with gratitude, with a hallelujah. I'm going to have you come to your hands and your knees to start today. And start to say good morning to your spine. Rounding and arching the spine in a way that feels good for you. Just let your spine play. So you can start with cat and cow, but Move toward wagging the tail and making some spirals with your hips, releasing the weight of your head and your neck. Let's thread the needle by scooping the right arm under the left. Place the right side of your head on the floor or a block. Slowly, gently press yourself up and thread the needle on the other side. Go ahead and come up and open your knees as wide as your mat and come into a child's pose. You can extend the arms long if that feels good or you can keep them close to your body. And the next few breaths, focus on your lower back. Feel the lower rib cage expanding. Imagine that you're inflating the area of your kidneys. And as you exhale, release all of the air from your lungs and let your hips get a little heavier, moving toward your heels, toward the floor. Go ahead and come back up to all fours. And bring your wrists under your shoulders and your knees under your hips. And let's pull the navel in. So you've got your belly button pulled in tight, close to the spine. 
and your back is flat. And we're going to keep the back flat as we extend the right leg behind us, lifting it up off the floor, not too high. So really notice your uh, lower back. If it starts to feel like it's bending or caving in, then lower your leg a bit and re-engage your core. So we want to keep the back flat and keep the work in the glutes and the hamstring. And flex that right foot and reach back behind you. And now we're going to round the spine just a bit as we bring the right knee in toward our nose. So we're going to round the knee to the nose, blow out. Inhale, extend the leg back behind you again. As you exhale, round and contract the abdominal muscles, just firing up your core. Inhale and extend. And one more exhale, rounding. Inhale, extend. And then bring that knee down and release your spine. Do a couple of cat cows. And then reset yourself up to do this on this, the other side. So pull the navel in and extend the left leg, flex the left foot, engage your inner thigh. So almost like your inner thigh is being pulled toward your right inner thigh. So you keep the legs close to each other. Breathe here. As you exhale, round and tuck, knee toward the nose. Inhale, extend. Exhale, round. Inhale, extend. Last time, exhale, round. Inhale, extend. And then bring the knee down. And keep your buns up, but just extend your arms out in front of you. Take a puppy pose so the head will come toward the floor or block. And take a big breath in. You'll feel the front of the diaphragm, front of the rib cage. Get a little extra stretch here as you breathe in. And let it out. Good. Let's come on back to all fours. And let's see, let's have our blocks and our massage balls nearby. We'll come to standing at the top of the mat. So place your ball just in arm's reach. We'll use that in just a minute. Standing at the top of your mat in mountain pose. So legs are about hip width apart. And I want you to rock forward and back on your feet, feeling the weight distribution front to back and right to left, finding center for you. Lift your toes, try to spread the toes out and place them back down. Turn your thigh bones, your femurs, just slightly inward toward each other. Internal rotation of both legs, good. And when you do that, you can feel a little firing of the leg muscles. So building your foundation here of strength, pull your navel in. Inhale, lift the shoulders. Inhale, bring the shoulders back and down. And then keep them there so the chest, heart area is open. Palms might even be slightly facing forward, standing tall and strong in mountain pose. Hineni, here I am. I'm ready, Hineni. I'm able, Hineni. Inhale, reach your arms up, gather lots of energy through your inhale, and then as you exhale, dive forward. Come all the way forward, find your block or the floor, bend your knees if you need to. Let yourself hang for a moment. Let your head go. Inhale and come halfway up, keep the abdominals engaged. Exhale, fold again. Look up and reach out and inhale up. Opening, saying yes to life, saying yes. Hallelujah, here I am.
Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Bring your legs together and firm up the thighs. Inhale, reach up. And exhale, grab your right wrist with your left hand and pull the belly in and just give a little gentle pull to the wrist so you're leaning to your left side. And come up. And take the opposite wrist. Belly is engaged as you lean to the right. And come back up, good. And then open your stance so you're stable on the lower body. Bring your hands behind your back. If you can interlace your fingers, go ahead and do that. If not, take opposite elbows. You can always reach for your strap if you need to as well. So we're reaching back, chest is open. Start to bend the knees, pull the belly in, and hinge forward at your hip crease and bring those arms behind you. Breathe. Release your hands to the floor, and as you inhale, scoop them up in front of you. Hands back to the heart. Good. Let's do a little bit of massage. So take your ball or your fingertips if you're just using fingers, and we'll start on the right side of the neck. Start at the base of your skull on just the right side, on the right side of the spine, and work right into that little soft spot under the base of the skull, bringing some massage, some fresh circulation to the area. Feel free to move around the whole neck, side of the neck, top of the shoulder, whatever feels good. Let your knees be soft. Be very gentle when you're working on the side of the neck. I like to do little circles on the way down toward my shoulder. And then bring the ball down to the, underneath your collarbone on the right side and just do a little side to side massage under the collarbone. If you need to change hands for ease, you can do that. So when you get under the collarbone, you help to get the attachment of your front neck muscles, the sternocleidomastoids, to a mouthful. But it's a really important set of muscles here in the front of the neck that help with posture and help keep the head upright. And they tend to get short over time. So when you massage under the collarbone, then you're releasing the attachment of those muscles. And it can help to relieve neck tension. Go ahead and move into the chest on the right side, doing some massage and movement with the arm. Good. Let's move to the back of the left side of the neck, holding the ball in your left hand and start to open up those muscles behind the head, down the side. Keep your breath flowing and your knees soft, a little tiny bend in the knees. Softly rooted in the earth, not locked in the knees, but open and receptive and soft. Working any areas gently that need some extra TLC this morning. And starting to move down to the collarbone on the left side, just massaging right under the collarbone. Maybe changing hands if you need to with the ball. 
You could even tilt your head a little bit up as you get under the collarbone. And then starting to move into the chest. Breath and presence is cultivating, living in the body with peace and ease. Good, let's relax the arms. Place your ball in front of you. We're gonna come back to that for the feet. But let's, now that we've massaged and opened the neck and chest, let's actively stretch. So bring your left ear to your left shoulder. Just the weight of the head, so no force here. Take a breath and notice where you feel any tension. And practice micro movements. So if you wanna tilt your chin up a little bit or down, notice where you need the breath and the opening. And then start to roll your chin towards your chest to move into the back of the neck and do some half circles. Good, and then gaze straight ahead. Take your right hand and reach out to the side. So as soon as you do that, did your shoulder pop up? If it did, bring it down, kind of tuck that scapula in and draw it back and reach through your palms. So spread the fingers wide and you'll feel a, a nice deep stretch, hopefully inside your arm, depending on how much keyboarding and typing and whatnot you do with your hands, you might feel really tight in your forearm as well. So breathing as you hold the arm out to the side and then look away from your arm. So turn your head over your left shoulder, reaching with your right arm and breathe. Bring the head back to center and then relax the arm. Just shake out the arm. Release all the effort. And then before we move to the other side, just take notice of the right side of the neck, shoulder, arm. Compare it to the left side. What do you notice is different? And now let's Bring the right ear to the right shoulder very gently and breathe. Soften your knees. Micro movements with the neck and the chin. Roll your chin toward your chest. Do some half circles. And then look straight ahead and lift the left arm. Flex the uh, wrist, extend the wrist and press through your palm, spread your fingers wide. Make sure your scapula or your shoulder blade is back and down. When everything's in place and you feel a stretch in your arm, then gaze over your right side. I want you to imagine you're pressing into a wall. so. You feel really active in the stretch. Good, look straight ahead and then bring the arm down and shake it out, just really gentle. And then bring your hands behind you again. See if you can interlace your fingers or hold a strap and reach your chest forward. And bend your knees and hinge at your hip crease again and bring those arms over your head. Big breath in and let it out. Good, release your hands toward the floor and then engage your belly, look up and start to rise up, reaching your arms out to your side, reaching up and hands to your heart, just connecting with your hands in prayer at your heart, feeling maybe the beating of your heart right under your thumbs. 
Feel the heat of your hands as they press in toward each other. Hineni, here I am. Can we be here despite all that's going on in our lives and in the world? Can we be here inside a place of peace, in living in shalom? Let's get more grounded by massaging the feet. So take your ball, or if you don't have a ball, you can have a seat and just use your thumbs to massage your arches of your feet. And we're just gonna take a minute on each foot and iron out any sore spots. You might not iron them out completely, but at least make some contact with those spots. One of the best ways that we can affirm where we are in the moment is by just becoming embodied again. Just bringing all the awareness back to what you feel in your body in that moment, where you feel your breath, where your feet are. That's the number one way that I do it is find your feet. Go ahead and switch to your other foot and iron that it out, give it some love. Keep your breath flowing. Good. Okay. So you can move your ball off to the side and just do a little in place prancing just to stretch the feet out. You can even tuck your toes under and stretch the shins or the tops of the feet. Do some ankle circles so the toes will stay on the floor, but your knees and ankles will move. Go both directions, just bringing some nice spiral action to the joints. Make sure you get both sides. Good, bring your feet together, hands on top of your thighs, keep your belly engaged, and just start to do some knee circles. But saying hello to all of the joints in the body, freeing the energy that can get really stuck and stagnant in these places. We're just opening the floodgates of life force, change direction, bringing gratitude to all of these joints that they move for us, that they make us mobile, that we can do our work in the world because we're able to move our bodies. Good. Open up your legs a little wider, maybe as wide as your mat, and start to do some hip circles as far out to the sides as you can. So I want you to feel the hips getting a nice stretch here. Pull your belly in as you bend forward and keep your knees really soft. Making sure to change directions. <laughs> Good. All right. Let's do our three thumbs. So tapping under the collarbones, vigorously taking really big deep breaths. Just regulating our immune systems to stay strong during this season. And bringing the tapping into the chest and take a deep breath in and let out an awe with a smile, if you will. Ah. Good. And now knocking or tapping on the ribs, rubbing, massaging, whatever works. Get into that space in the ribs, waking up your spleen, meridian and then shaking out your arms, 
shaking out your body a little bit. Good. So let's work with um, finding peace while we're trying to find balance, right? And the challenge of, of getting balanced. So use your strap for this. And we're gonna start with our left leg as our standing leg. And the right foot is gonna go into the strap or whatever you're using for a strap. And we're gonna start to lift the right leg while we hold the strap. And we're gonna pull the shoulder blades together, keep the chest open, and just lift the leg to a place that feels manageable. As I mentioned before, I'm kind of on a thick, soft carpet, so um, maybe gaze at something that's not moving in front of you in your home rather than me, because I might, I might throw you off <laughs> if I lose my balance. And really flex the right foot and squeeze the quadricep of both legs. Yes, good, so finding your balance through coming back home to your breath. Soften your breath. Feel the inhales and the exhales connecting to each other without stopping. If you come out of it, go ahead and just float back into it. Good, bend that knee a little bit and step down. Shake out your standing leg. And we'll switch sides. So strap goes around the bottom of the left foot and then make sure your right foot is pointed forward. So you wanna have great alignment in the bones of the leg. Squeeze your standing leg and then start to lift your left leg using your hip flexors and your quadricep muscles and just lift it to a place that feels manageable for you, might be, but still a challenge. And squeeze, squeeze, squeeze and focus on something a drishti point that's not moving and breathe softly with control. Good, go ahead and step down from that. Release your strap to the side. We're going to come back to our left leg as a standing leg, and we're going to lift the right knee. So like a little stork pose here. Arms can be out to the sides for balance if you'd like. Pull the navel in. Draw those shoulder blades together. Good. It's like you have, it's like a, you're like a loving stork. You just have your wings open and you're in, going in for a hug. Heart open. Good, lower that leg down, relax your arms, and then ground down through the right leg and foot and start to lift the left knee, open up those wings, open heart. And release. So in yoga, as we open our arms, we support our balance. It's a little harder when we're closed. So we open our arms and open our heart, it's easier to stay in balance. And I think that could be true in, in life too, right? As a teaching moment. Let's open up the legs wide and take, go sideways on your mat and we'll take Prasarita Padottanasana. So wide-legged forward fold, you can bring your block with you if you'd like. Just make sure that if you have socks or you're not on your mat, that you feel like you're stable enough in a slide. And we're gonna come forward halfway, so fingertips might touch the floor or palms, it depends on the length of your arms, but we're looking for a 90 degree angle here. So your body is just bent over halfway, back is flat. If you're rounding through your shoulder, go ahead and use a block or two to give you some space to bring your shoulder blades together. Gaze out in front of you a couple of feet and breathe. Pull the belly in. And then start to come forward, taking whatever variation that you would like of this pose. We arms could be out. I'm gonna do a twist though, so I'll walk us through a twist. Right arm reaches forward and left hand comes to the right leg. So somewhere that works for you, could be your shin, it could be your foot or your thigh. 
And then this look under your right arm, taking a gentle twist here, breathing. Come back to center. And if you were twisting with me, go ahead and switch sides. Come back to center. Let yourself hang hands underneath you, bring a slight bend to the knees. And then start to heel toe your feet in toward each other until you can bring your hands to your hips and come up safely, nice and slow. Good, and then walk your feet together, face the top of your mat. So we're going to take another balancing pose. So standing on the left leg, coming into tree. So bring your right foot in to the leg somewhere that works for you, just not on your knee joint. Pressing the foot into the leg and the leg into the foot. And then using your open heart and your branches to help you with balance. If you start to lose your balance, start breathing. If you lose your balance, let yourself lose balance. Try not to fight it, just surrender to the fact that you lost your balance and come back into it. And release this side and shake out your standing leg, that left leg. And as you're ready, take tree rikshasana on the right side. Where's your breath? The breath brings you back to Hineni, to here I am, right here, right now. Good. Go ahead and come out of that. Release your legs. And then come to your seat. We'll take a seated twist this morning. So sitting on your mat, or if you need to sit on a rolled up blanket for to prop up your hips a little bit, you can do that. Bring your left heel towards your right buttocks. And if you can, cross your uh, right ankle over your leg. If not, just bring it close to your body. Totally fine. Yep. And then we're going to hold on to the knee or shin with the left arm or hand and twist over your right shoulder. Elongating the spine as you breathe in and rotating as you breathe out without force, just letting the spine rotate with the exhale. Come back to center and take a counter twist. So just holding on to the uh, front leg now with your right hand and bring your left arm behind you and twist to your left. Keep the shoulders down away from the ears.
and come back to center. If, you, if your foot's kind of coming up off the floor, that's okay. We're gonna stay in this position with the right leg over the left. If you can move your feet apart, away from your buns a little bit, we're gonna get right into the hips here. So everyone will look and feel differently here. So some of you may feel like, whoa, this is a lot on my hips just right here. Uh, you might think I'm just crazy for asking you to be in this shape. Some of you might have a little more opening in your hips and you'll wanna walk your hands forward and, and hinge at the crease of your hip while pulling the belly in to get a little more into the hips. So just approaching the hips with respect and gentleness. Our hips hold a lot of stored emotion. So we want to just softly enter the space of the hips. Good, let's walk our hands back. If you were leaning forward, we're gonna straighten the legs out in front of us and just do a little bouncing of the legs. Good, now, um, Knock your toes in toward each other. So a little internal, external rotation of the legs, good. And let's take our twist on the other side. So bring the right heel toward the left buttock this time, and then cross your left foot over your leg or bring it in close to the body. And just shift side to side and do your best to get both sits bones on the floor. And as you're ready, twisting over the left shoulder as you hold your knee. Keep your left arm close to your lower back so it's helping you to stay nice and tall with the spine and drop your shoulders away from your ears. Come into your counter twist now. So just twisting over to the other side. Nice open twist. Right hand close to your tailbone. Come back to center and then whatever adjustments you need to make with your feet. So I'm gonna let my left foot come off the floor and start to pull my feet away from each other just a little bit to get into the hips. And starting to feel a nice deep stretch in the hips, either staying here seated or maybe leaning forward. Just listening to your body. Finding peace inside of the various sensations that you might be feeling. Relaxing your face and your jaw. And if you are leaning forward, pressing yourself up and extending your legs out in front of you, do another little jostling of the legs. Do some ankle rotations in both directions. Good. And then come to your back with your block. I'd like you to bring your block in between your thighs and bring your feet close to your buttocks. So we're setting our body up for a bridge pose. Shimmy your shoulders down away from your ears and your palms can be face down next to your hips and just give your block a squeeze. Just give it a little squeeze. If you don't have a block, imagine that you have a block there on the skinny setup, the skinny side and just imagine that you're squeezing the block. So you've got space between your legs, but not too much. With the squeezing of the block still happening, you'll start to tuck your tailbone and peel your hips off the floor and just come into a small bridge, pressing into the ground with your feet. 
So trying not to squeeze the glutes so much as um, activating the feet into the floor and squeezing the inner thighs toward each other. Breathing here. As you exhale, lower down. Take an inhale to prepare. And as you exhale, squeeze the block and lift the hips. Maybe coming up a little higher. For those of you who want to walk your shoulders in toward each other and try to clasp your hands, you can do that. Breathing, squeezing with the block, really expanding and opening through the front body, the chest, the belly, looking straight up so you keep pressure off of your neck. If your hands are underneath you, go ahead and bring them back out next to you and start to lower your hips back to the floor. Good, release your block and hug your knees into your chest. Just rocking from side to side. Bring your feet to the floor. And then open the knees so the feet are going to come toward each other so you're in a little uh, butterfly wing pose. Or this is Supta Baddha Kanasana, so it's reclined bound angle pose. So just having the feet together, knees open. If this feels like too much on your hip joints um, and you don't have two blocks to place under your knees, it's really helpful to make fists with your hands and just wedge those fists underneath the sides of your buttocks on either side. It can really take pressure off the hip joint. And breathing into the inner thighs for a couple of breaths here. Engage your belly and bring your knees back toward each other. And then lift your hips and shift them over to the left just a couple of inches. And then bring your arms into a T position and let your knees fall to the right. So just a gentle twist, gazing over your left shoulder. Activating the core, bring the top knee up, followed by the bottom knee. Shift your hips over to the right a few inches, and then take your twist over to the left. Gazing over your right shoulder. Come back to center and reestablish the alignment of your hips with your feet on the floor. And take a moment to feel into your body. Notice if it needs anything else before you rest in Shavasana. So just taking a minute or two to offer your body anything else it needs. And when you hear the sound of the singing bowl, we'll do three rounds of the bowl. Let that be your invitation to settle into Shavasana officially.
allowing your body to begin to settle into deep rest. Releasing all effort. Bringing awareness to your spine just as we began. Feeling your spine now as you're lying down on the floor as you breathe. Feel the spine pressing into the floor. As you breathe out, feeling those waves, those ripples on the lake, just starting to soften and disperse into stillness and peace. Rabbi David Cohen states, to say he may me expresses a yearning for a spiritual awakening, a moment, however fleeting, in which we feel close to the heart of the universe. It declares a receptive mind and an openness of soul, a readiness to engage. To say he may me is to live simultaneously in the past, present, and future. To be aware of our past as a source of our identity and its values. To see the future, alert to its possibilities, committed to its betterment. And to experience every day in the present, living according to our values, grateful for every moment. We are so grateful to be alive, to be here. We are grateful to be in relationship with this universe, which has transformed us all in so many ways. With this chant, we affirm our lives, our healing, and the sacred transformation that is always taking place within us all as we do the hard things. Hallelujah. He Let your breathing expand into your lungs. 
deeper and deeper, filling up completely with this fresh new moment. Exhale anything that you feel like you want to let go of right now. Anything that would get in the way of you living fully in this present moment. As you breathe deeply, start to awaken to your senses, to your surroundings. Maybe moving your fingers and your toes and just taking all the time you need to roll to your side, rising up to this place of where you are in this sacred moment. Hallelujah. Let your hands rest at your heart. And please join me in this call and response prayer. May all beings be safe. May all beings be healthy. May all beings have peace. 